Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2020 battle series. That sounds a little bit better. My name is Lee, uh, also known as Osiris, and we are going to continue on with this dual primal team today. We started with it yesterday. If you haven't caught up with that episode and you'd like to see before coming into today's episode, I'll leave a card up there for you. You can check it out and then come into today's episode and we'll continue with the team. If you want to just stick around and then maybe go back and watch it afterwards, that is fine. But dude, check out yesterday's episode. It was a really nice introduction to Dual Primals and we had some really nice matches there. The team is always is down in the description below. There is a roll paste and a poker paste if you'd like to just check out the details or even try the team out for yourself be my guest and if you do please make sure to let me know what your thoughts are on the team and how you found it in battle in those matches and things like that but uh, just to recap we've got the primal groudon we've got tapu koko it has got the electrium there we've got the kyoga uh stack attack are going to be our primary uh trick room set our why god support and uh, we've got skill swap on there a little bit different um, then the, the Mega Salamence is our Mega of the team and Incineroar there. So we've got dual Z moves at the moment and they're a little bit conflicting. Um, whether or not a Soul Fest would be better on the Incineroar, that was something I did think about. But like I said, we will tweak things come the end of the week and make sure that it's really concise and a really nice finished article. So at the minute we're just trying ideas out and there's nothing wrong with that uh, when you're starting out with a build. You might look at it, uh, what you've put together and think, uh, it doesn't really make that much sense right now, but you're testing ideas out in the team to see what works and then you make that collective decision come the end of the week and that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a collective decision and obviously remember that your input is so valuable and I love hearing everyone's opinions so we might interpret your ideas into the team come the end of the week so don't be shy about sharing them or just some thoughts about the team in general. But without further ado, we will get into it today as always if you do enjoy this sort of content please remember to leave a like on the video do subscribe to the channel for more pokemon content and do so uh, leave your comments down below uh, let's hop over to our right screen because we're sitting on a rating of 16 22 not too bad i guess into our second week we'll kick off with ultra recon squad and hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our first opponent of the episode and like i mentioned in yesterday's episode i had a little bit of time this evening to record some videos i've not really been feeling my best today i've been feeling pretty ill all day and i'm kind of going into a little bit of a a lull now where i'm feeling a little dizzy and a bit a bit queasy so bear with me I will try and get through this. I'll probably try not to jabber as much as I did in yesterday's episode because I'm, I'm pretty sure the outcome of that will probably be quite remarkable. Um, I hope it's not, and I hope it's just all in my head. That I'm like, oh my, what am I saying? Why am I saying this? Why am I carrying on talking? But um, yeah, I do apologize. I'm not really felt great today, so um, I'm hoping I'm not going to come down with some crazy illness um, and I'll be all right so hopefully it'll be good and um, it is going to take a little bit longer to find a first opponent than I would have liked but we'll just keep uh, we'll keep rolling and uh, we'll see what happens but uh, sword and shield ah oh, come on cutting us off like that how rude but we do have a first opponent we'll come back to sword and shield another time uh, but we'll get into team preview so our first opponent today is running another call that we played in yesterday's episode uh, that we haven't seen too much of in the Ultra series, but it seems to be picking up a little bit of usage, especially on the channel here. So we've got Xerneas and Lunala as a restricted call, support and cast of Incineroar and Kangaskhan, and then the Amoongus and Tapu Fini. Now the Amoongus does throw a bit of a spanner in the works for us, for sure. Um, just because uh, if we set a trick room up, it's going to be awkward to kind of play around it. Um, I do want Incineroar. The uh, fake out is going to be very useful for the Kangaskhan opposing Incineroar. Uh, and uh, obviously it does nice job against the Lunala and the Amoongus as long as our sun's up on the field. So I think I will bring Incineroar. Um, I'm going to actually leave Groudon. I'm going to bring Coco and Stacker in the back. I'm going to bring the same four I brought against this similar call yesterday. But the reason I'm bringing Coco in the back is because, well, no, I'm not actually. I'm going to bring Coco up top with stacks. No, I'm not. I'm going to bring Coco, Incineroar, Groudon, and stacks. That's what we're going with. 
I was going to say I don't want to leave Coco because then uh, Terrain will get overwritten by Tapafinis, but either Terrain is fine because uh, the Amoongus can't spore us in either respect. And you've got to think the Amoongus in this sort of team supports the Xerneas more in a, a redirection uh, sort of um, mode. That's why if we can get our Trick Room up and get a Stack Attacker going with Groudon on the field, then the Amoongus kind of becomes a little bit irrelevant. We are going to see uh, Kangaskhan and Xerneas come out for my opponent. Uh, we can trade fake outs or we can um, go for a Z move. We could go for the Z move again. I think I prefer to sit on the Z move right now. Um, we could just go for Volt Switch and a fake out into the Xerneas. That might be a better idea to do, to be honest. Um, we could Z move it and switch into Groudon. It might not be a bad idea, but we're putting like all our eggs in one basket there if we do that. And then if the Coco gets faked out, we're in, we're in a lot of trouble. I think just Volt switching, faking out here isn't the worst decision in the world. And we could see the Kangaskhan switch out again for the Incineroar might happen. We're not going to see that though. We're going to see the Kangaskhan Mega Evolve. What does it do? Where do you go? Fake out into Coco. Okay, that's fine. Wow, man. Nasty crit. So we'll just trade fake outs here, which is fine. Um, now the next turn is where I think we'll probably see uh, the Xerneas protect. I would imagine. Which makes me want to Volt Switch out on the Kangaskhan and U turn out on that slot as well. Because I think. Yeah, you either withdraw it or or you yeah. Then well you you can only withdraw it. You can't pivot out. Kangaskhan doesn't pivot. That's why it's not that good. Um I'm only messing around, but there's the protect. So we are gonna be able to adjust our ball position, which is the, the thing that we wanna do. Especially now the Kangaskhan's gone off the field. Stack attacker has a little bit of a better time um when it's not threatened by those um fighting type attacks but it's so easy for my opponent just to switch the incineral out to Kangaskhan again you've got to you, that's something you've got to consider but the whole time when we're doing this we're putting a lot of pressure on that Xerneas making it not want to go for the Geomancy um, as much so uh, I think that the one thing that I will do this next turn even though there is an active fake out on my opponent's side of the field is probably just go for um, a Trick Room and a Sword Stance with with Groudon uh, because we'll get one of them off and if we get whichever one we get off is fine because we've got our own fake out support in the back with Incineral to bring in we can still have support us and as long as Groudon's got that sword stance up it becomes such a huge threat so we will go for Trick Room and Sword Stance uh, see the fake out there it's into stacks so that's fine like I really don't mind that because what my opponent's got to do this next turn is they've got to switch out the Incineroar into Kangaskhan and by doing that you're kind of especially after the sword stance we're not really giving my opponent much room to uh, to get that Kangaskhan in protect the Xerneas have that fake out and attack pressure the next turn without the trick room going up um, and even if the Kangaskhan does switch for the Incineroar a plus two precipice blade should take it down and if you do make that play as well you've got to think the trick room is going up so you're in a, a horrible position and with a amoongus yeah you can bring it in right now but it's not really causing too much of an issue for me but with, with the electric terrain up we're not really worried about spore which would be the the main problem here we're not even going to see that we're just going to see a moon blast into stacks we take it like a, a true champ there's the precipice blades can we clear the field well, we're going to get rid of the Incineroar and the Xerneas. Wow. So, <sighs> Incineroar going down, 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 down. And uh, there's the Trick Room. Tasty. Um, what comes in for my opponent? Kangaskhan Lunala. I mean, we could just switch out Stack Attacker, to be honest, into Incineroar. And then we pretty much just win. Because even if the Lunala's got Wide Guard, 
it's not really going to help it too much. Um, we obviously need to... I, I want to protect Groud on this next turn. Um, I don't know. I will switch into Incineroar. I think it just makes a lot more sense. Uh, then we've got the Z move on Incineroar because we haven't burnt it on the Coco. So like I was saying like earlier in the video, um, having like some options on lots of different Pokemon that doesn't make so much sense. Like the dual Z move on this team doesn't make so much sense and I, I don't think we need dual Z move. I think it, it's conflicting. But this gives us it gives us the opportunity to look at the other Z move here and and not u utilizing it on Coco. So maybe it opens it up to put something else on Coco. Coco put in a lot of work in um, in the match already. So uh, without the Z move, we are going to see the Z move from Lunala. Yeah, come out. Um, but I think the next turn we probably all we really need to do is fake out Fire Punch Kang. So into Groudon, but behind the Protect, it's not going to be doing too much damage now, nah, not really much at all. Um, and like I say now, the Kangaskhan's not likely got Protect. The Lunala's likely got Wide Guard, I would say. It's probably quite obvious that it, well, it's not obvious, it's an option that it does have the, it does carry, and it does make it a lot easier supporting against, like, the Primals in this format as especially when they rely so heavily on spread attacks it makes a lot of sense so um i just want to get rid of the kang to be honest that's the main thing right now and i don't want to press his blades and give my opponent any room that's why i'm just utilizing the fake out here fire punch we're not really in, t in any threat of getting killed by anything from Lunala, so that's the reason why, and uh, we do see the forfeit there. So that's the second uh, Lunala Zonius team that we've played, and the second victory we've got. So it kind of comes across like we've got a decent-ish matchup against that team, and uh, we can play around it pretty well. Obviously, Stack Attacker helps out a bunch in that match. But... It's always nice to get off to a good start again, so that's very good for us, and uh, we'll move on to our next match. Um, and hopefully we can continue on like this, because it would be very... Right, so music. The first thing we need to think about, what are we going to go for here? Um, enter the Ultra Beasts, let's go for that one. Never really pick it, or I probably do, but never really realise. So we'll pick it here today. And uh, hopefully we can get up to 1700 by the end of the week, and I've said it now, and I should never say it, but we've said it. So that is the goal by the end of the week. That would be amazing, especially going into next week, as well as if we change up the team. But um, I'm really enjoying this dual Primals team so far. It's, it's a lot of fun. We haven't really featured the Kyogre as much as I would have liked to. Uh, we did feature it a little bit in yesterday's episode, so hopefully we can maybe see a bit more of it. It feels a bit more like the, the Groudon Stack Attacker show at the minute. Um, but kind of just proving that, that that particular portion of the team is just very strong in itself. So pairing it up with the other members um, can hopefully just improve that matchup. And it's quite nice having both of the weathers available, where most of the season, most players will only play one or the other. So you've only got one. But really having that 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 both the, the options there, the dual primals, that's the beauty about it. It does give you the option there. Um, one of the things I do think about is maybe, like, if you look at the team, Groudon can be a bit of an issue if played well, I think, against this particular call. Salamence does all right. We've got Wide Guard. Obviously, Kyogre helps. But like I say, if it's a well-played Groudon team, you're not really going to get the, the best out of your Kyogre at every point. Um, and there's, I think, an argument for Life Orb on Coco with Hidden Power Water in this call. And I'm only saying that because you go back to 2016 when you had Zapdos, and it kind of performed a similar role to what Tapu Koko does um, in this team, and it had Hidden Power Water uh, in that dual primal makeup, um, just for the Groudon. And obviously Zapdos is a little bit different, it is a flying type, so it's not hit by Precipice Blades, it's a nice switch in, um, but you can get yourselves in, into those positions where Tapu Koko could be there. Uh, you've got something out next to it, and you, all you need to do is switch in the Kyogre, and then you, you kind of nuke the um, the Groudon. The other option is go Ferium with the Koko with Hidden Power Water. Then you can deal with things like Salamence, 
that uh, in Rayquaza and Ultra Necrozma as well and you're not relying then so heavily on the Trick Room mode uh, of the team but lots of options there to think about like I say um, what music did we go for? Enter the Ultra Beast wasn't it? which I can't find there we go right it's going to take probably a little bit longer to find our first pawn and I'm just jabbering on making no sense here um, so I'm going to cut in now and we'll come back when we find our first opponent of the episode. First, well, second opponent of the episode. And, uh, sorry, I'm just texting Tash. She just texts me, so I have to text her back. Otherwise, she'll call and then she'll be wondering why I haven't picked up. Anyway, let's get in the team preview. It is a QR code team and it looks like uh, it looks like Pado's team, doesn't it, from the very first Ultra Series International Championships. Team made up of Xerneas, Rayquaza, uh, Incineroar, Amoongus, Tepafini and Nihiligo. Probably looking at Assault Fest, Rayquaza, Z-Move, Nihiligo and then the rest of the, the Pokemon are kind of your standards. Geomancy, um, uh, Power Herb, Xerneas, um, the Berry on Incineroar, maybe Focus Ash on Amoongus, I'm not too sure, and then Berry on, on Tepafini. Right, what are we going to do? I mean, Salamence is pretty good for us here, apart from the uh, the Nihiligo. The Nihiligo causes us lots of issues, uh, honestly. Um, in our speed control, we really want to get Trick Room up with stacks. Um, does Amoongus bother me too much? Not massively. Like, I'm kind of tempted to lead. I the, the, the Finny does cause us a lot of issues, especially with Groudon. Um, I'm going to bring Groudon, Stax, uh, let's go Coco and uh, Kyogre. Let's just do that. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> if it's not obvious already, I'm only joking. I'm not, I'm, I'm not joking, but I, I don't think I really give myself enough time. This matchup feels hard. Uh, I've not really thought it through very well, so... Uh. You know when you say that and you're recording, you're like, really, just this is like, you, you're just not, not yourself, go to bed, go to bed. But we're going to battle through, we'll get a win, it'll be alright. So we're going to see Incineroar and Rayquaza. Rayquaza does threaten um, pretty much uh, everything we've got out on the field now, because if it is that Salt Vest variant, um, it will have Earth Power. It could have Waterfall, it's more likely to have Earth Power. But, um, we need to preserve stacks, like, really. Stacks is the big thing we need to preserve. And uh, you know what, I think if we see the, the Rayquaza Mega Evolve here, it's fine. Um, what do you fake out? I think you fake out the stack attacker. Like, honestly, you probably fake out stacks. Because I'm kind of tempted, although if you've got Nihiligo on the back, you probably want to focus down a bit more on Groudon. I'm going to protect Groudon. I'm not really wanting to take any risks here. I'm just switching Kyogre. Um, Kyogre puts a nice bunch of, of pressure on, on the Rayquaza for sure. And I don't think we see a Dragon Ascent from the Rayquaza into Stack Attacker. Like, the the, the the attack that you go for here into Stack Attacker is definitely going to be Earth Power, if you go for anything. But I feel like you probably focus down more on the Groudon. Um, and fake out Stacker to stop the, the, the potential Trick Room. Uh, there's an argument for both, though. Uh, you know, going doubling into the Stack Attacker makes a lot of sense as well. Then the next turn you can you can get it. There's a figure into Groudon and uh, Earth Power into yeah, Kyogre. So that's that's fine. Um, hmm. Do we just go Precipice Blades? Get some damage onto the Incineroar and go Ice Beam. Mm, it's just a bit awkward because the stack is like huh. 
I mean you probably earth power the Groudon right now and then it makes more sense to do that and we've not really got the switch in for it here um, so probably precipice blading and going for an ice beam into the ray is the best thing to do yeah Incinero is going to switch out <sighs> okay Tapu Fini coming in we really need this delta stream to go um, oh it's going Dragon Ascent into Kyogre huh we should take this especially if it's a salt best variant yeah I mean it's defense laws then and it makes it a lot easier for us I'm not really I don't really agree with that play too much I mean weakening the Kyogre is like obviously gonna be good but that damage for us is so valuable and um, the problem is uh, we're probably gonna see uh, scald from the Tapu Fini now and the one thing we probably want to do is pull a double switch uh, get Coco onto the field uh, with stacks and I'm gonna get stack attacker in for uh, Kyogre because I imagine we'll probably see scald from the Finny into the ground on slot and we'll see another dragon ascent or an extreme speed into the Kyogre because um, you can't afford to leave the Kyogre alone here I don't think um, and if we lose Coco here, it's not ideal, but we do get our Groudon back onto the field and the, the Finny's not really a threat with that water type attack any longer. Just going to see the Dragon Ascent. Either target here will be able to take this pretty comfortably. Uh, there it is. Yep, Stack's taking that pretty comfortably there. And uh, the, the, the beauty is if Coco survives this, it can take down the Ray the next turn. Um, with a dazzling gleam and we can trick room as well so either way to win it's a win so we'll go for the dazzle uh i think because hmm how do we z move it could z move just to make sure that ray goes down what do we want to z move the thing what am i more worried about i'm gonna z move the ray quasar and I'm going to trick room. Yeah. Oh, the ray goes out. What comes in? What comes in, though? That is a question. That's it at all. I don't mind that. Really don't at all. I mean, we could have all switched there. It would have given us a bit more momentum going into the next turn. But, I mean, the fact that... Uh, the ray's out... Um, kind of supports our ourselves a little bit better because um, when we get Groudon in at least we've got the switch out oh, do we get the Incineroar? We don't actually get it no hmm. I'm not even making sense here, it would have been better to go for the, the Finny, hopefully we don't get burned no, there's a trick for you okay And we've got skill swap as well, so it makes our matchup like the switching for uh, the Ray a little bit easier, I guess. Um, what I'm going to do is switch into Groudon here, and I'm going to go for a Gyrobolt into Finny. Hopefully we don't see a U-turn on the Incineroar just yet, and we see a fake out rather than anything else. There's a fake out into yet yeah, Groudon. That's perfect for us now. We're in a, a great position. Yep, yeah, Scald doesn't happen. So what my opponent is probably going to try and do now, I think, is switch the Incineroar out. Um, the worst possible thing to happen here would be um, a U-turn, but you can't, you can't U-turn. Because we should be fat, slower than the Incineroar, so we should be able to take it down. It's just a case of how fast that Incineroar is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna skill swap the Groudon, and I'm gonna go for a Pessimus Blade. They're going for the hard switch, so this works out perfectly for us. So the Delta Stream will get set up, and they're trying to catch us with the Scald, but it's not gonna happen because, yeah, uh, the skill swap will happen now. 
We'll give Groudon the Beast Boost. We'll take the Desolate Land, uh, activate it, overwrite the, the, the Dell Stream, stop the Scald from happening. Hit the Precipice Blitz. We'll probably proc a berry on the finny or oh, take it down even better. Uh, get a beast boost as well. Here we go. Beast boosting Groudon. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to be a bit tricky the next turn because we really want Stacker to. I mean, it's not too bad, to be honest, because the Incineroar comes in, it goes for the fake out. It probably fakes out Stacker, I would imagine. You fake out Stacker, you've got. To, I think you've got to double Stacker uh, with an Earth Power, because Groudon will take an Earth Power from Rayquaza, um, and then we've got Kyogre to come in, and we've got Tapu Koko to come in and deal with this this Ray anyway. Um, whatever the whatever the problem is, so we'll go for a Precipice Blades. We'll go for a Gyro Ball into the Ray. Hopefully, a Gyro Ball will be enough to take the Ray down from this range. I'm not so sure. But like I said, I don't mind too much because we do have Kyogre to come in. And we got rid of the big threat to to Groudon. The, the type of finny. Fake out into Groudon. Oh, we're going to get the Gyro Ball. This takes down the, the Ray. Where? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Okay. It's not too bad. I mean... This is the thing now. Now we get Kyogre onto the field, um, and we're not really relying on our. Um, do we? Do we get Kyogre out? I think we get Kyogre out for sure. Yeah, and we kind of bait. Well, I'm probably going to protect because I don't want to take an extreme speed from the Rayquaza. That's the thing. Hmm. Because we could. <laughs> The thing is, I, I should really fire punch the Ray, switch out Kyogre into Tapu Koko. Because I think you have to extreme speed the Kyogre here. If you're Rayquaza. And I do think Kyogre probably will, without an Intimidate, probably will go down from this range. There's a chance it might survive. Uh, instead, I'm going to switch out. I'm uh, going to see Z yeah, Zern come in now. So my opponent trying to set up that board position, that end board position. Uh, with the Incineroar fake out and then the, the Xerneas, but I still think we'll be right. Whatever happens. As long as we can get a sword stance off with Groudon, I think we'll be okay. There's the extreme speed here. Fire punch, and that probably would have taken Kyogre down. So uh, we're probably better off doing what we've just done and having a bit more flexibility. We do get the beast boost. It's going to be uh, negated by the intimidate coming in from this incineral, uh, but we're still neutral at the minute, which is fine. And do we have a do we have a zine? I don't think we do. Do we? No, because we used it into incineral. Hmm. But I'm going to try and Sword Stance here. And um, do we Volt Switch? I'm going to Volt Switch out into the zone just to get some damage off onto it. I think you fake out the Groudon. Yeah. Great. How dare you? Uh, yeah, we'll get. We'll see the Geomancy here for sure. But it's whether or not Groudon can take two... It can take two Dazzling Gleams. I don't think it will take two Moon Blasts. That's the problem. But if we... Yeah, if we Scald... Yeah, I think we just scald the Incineroar now. Because if we get the Precipice Blades on a single target Xerneas, that could be enough for us. Uh, and I think you really have to go for the Moonblast into Groudon. If you go Dazzle, I'm not sure Dazzle and a Moonblast will take us down from this range. I'm not too sure. It's probably better for my opponent to go Dazzle. Yeah. Uh, but a Precipice Blades 
should hit. Ah, oh, we probably do go down to the Moonblast, to be honest. We do hit. We should take down the, the Incineroar. We should do enough to the Xerneas. Hmm, yeah. Okay, it's gonna be it's gonna be really close. I don't think you can dazzle Groudon next turn. I think you have to Moonblast it, and we could use that. Hmm. Oh, do we thunder? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I think you like. I personally, I think you have to. Da you have to moonblast grad on here uh, to get it, which opens the door for Coco to get a thunder off, which makes me want to go protect grad on and go thunder. But if we do this, we could easily miss, and uh, my opponent could just dazzle here anyway. And then the Groudon go down to Moonblast the next turn. Yeah, so they're going to do that. So, I mean, that's fair enough. Um, now they just Moonblast. So, we would have been better there going for the Precipice Blades. But, like, the logical thing to do, I think... Uh, I I don't regret what we did. Because I think the, 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 the smarter move there for my opponent would have been uh, to Moonblast Groudon. Uh, you're not threatened by the Coco anyway. And I don't think you go down to Thunder... Or a Thunderbolt. Uh, but if you dazzle, yeah, you move last now. Do we take it? I doubt it. Nah, we would have been better going for a Fire Punch. <sighs> so close, but so far. A uh, very good game to my opponent, and we were so close there. There was logic behind why I did it. I, hopefully you guys can see that, but 50-50 at the end there. Um, and I think we did all right other than that, so... I'm going to end it there. It's been a lot of fun again, and we'll come back tomorrow with more dual primal action, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. As always, if you do enjoy the content, do remember to drop a like on the video, and uh, have a great day, whatever you're up to, and I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you all very soon, hopefully. I'm not too ill in the next couple of days. So until then, guys, take care, and bye-bye.